Hi, welcome to the space. This is Jessica Ivdi. We are talking practical spirituality here. Uh, I have learned the Bible for a whole year and learned so much out of it. And what I'm doing today is I'm sharing and serving all my knowledge that I've gained from this learning that has helped me with my own um, problems and I have helped others. And now I just want to share it with more people because I think it's very important that if we have something good, we have to give it, to share it so others people, so other people could gain it out of it. And this is what I'm doing here today. So, um, you are more than welcome to join this, the channel. Every week I have new content that you could gain from. Um, let's begin. So. Today we're talking about hard times in our lives, tra traumatic uh, experiences, how to look at it right and how to feel just a little bit better about it. How do we do it? So it talks about Dina. Dina in the Bible has been um, raped by Chamo, Shechem ben Chamo and her brothers Shimon and Levi. They go out to our to like they, they 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 take their knives or whatever and they go out for this revenge and they kill everybody. And they basically were trying to save her broken soul to to make her feel better. But honestly, like it, it is not enough to to heal trauma, even if you do whatever. Like if you bring the the killer to someone who his family died by him it's not gonna help out it's not revenge is just not enough okay it's not it doesn't heal so on the pshat level like on the literal level what we're supposed to do is 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 just do you are supposed to go to the police you are supposed to do whatever you are supposed to remove something bad from our life you have to act out you have to do whatever you have to do Okay, so that's what they did. And I'm not saying today this is what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to go around killing people. Uh, we, today we have other ways to act on, but, but that's on the acting part. Now, how are we supposed to take it into a deeper level of inner work? So really our soul is looking, is it, what, when something bad happens, our soul wants to feel better. It, it wants... Um, to go through a process, it wants to know that something is fixed. It needs to get fixed. So, on the inner and the secret part of the Torah, which is not known for everybody, really it tells us that Dina, um, I forgot how it's called in English, it's called Gilgul Neshemot, is when your soul is a person dies and then his soul, his soul goes into another person so so i forgot the name for it right now so so it actually happens to her three times throughout history and every time she goes from a bad person to a good like she marries a bad person and then she goes into a good person it goes marries a good person her soul dina um i'm not gonna go into it, it it's just come to tell us that in her own situation, there was something very spiritual and high and important in her kind of fixing for this world. And this is what she had to do. She had to go through bad people to good people. Why? We don't know. But that's sometimes a way of fix this, fixing a world in a very high and spiritual level. Um, some things have to be done in a way that is very unacceptable and very un, un, not of, we, we can't get it because it's the mystical part of this life. Are we supposed to deal with it all day and think? No, that's not our job to do it. The only thing we could do is know that this is how things are done. And why is it important? Because if I know that I have been, whatever, something bad has happened to me, but if I only take into consideration that what happened to me is not this moment in time, this moment, little moment in time is not the whole world. There's a perspective of thousands of years before me. Things have happened. 
um, even me, if, it, if, if I'm my only thing that matters right now, so, okay, so, so right now is, it, this happened right now, but in a perspective of five or ten years, you know, I once saw um, a Tony Robbins, sh uh, like this little piece on Facebook, so this man was like, he was on the edge, he wanted, to, he was really depressed, I, I think he wanted to kill himself, or it was it a she, I can't remember, but he said something so smart. He told him or her, you know, right now it seems like it's the end of the world and my maybe, but if you give yourself a chance, if you give yourself a perspective of five years, just one year, five years, 10 years, you're going to see how everything turns out so differently from how you experience it right now. So I think that helps me on my, on, you know, on a personal level, uh, just, just a, a really simple belief that everything is for the best, even if I can't see it, it gives it gives us hope. I don't think it's always easy to think that way, but I don't see any other choice um, to actually live a life better than not thinking that way. I don't see people succeeding not thinking that way. So, um. Yeah, so when we know that pe the other people also have been gone, have gone through stuff, and we go and take inspiration from the Bible, from whatever, and we see people actually getting big out of situations, they learned, they learned how to help other people with their own situation. They open centers. You know, um, a year ago, I I personally dealt with. Uh, something bad that happened to me 30 years ago. It's 31 years ago now and For 30 years. I had no Perspective on how this thing could even be just a little good. You know, I would I would sometimes curse God in my heart Like what do you think you'd I wouldn't be so mad. I mean look at me I'm, I'm a mess because of that. How am I supposed to get out of this like and even if I do I'm just like living near life. I'm not even doing what I'm supposed to because it, it really messed me up. But once I got to the point, to the turning point in my life where it all turns out for a really better way and maybe it could have happened before, I don't know, but it happened a year ago and everything turned out so amazing. I became so much stronger and I'm able to now talk to people and help out people and have retreats and have like workshops on how to help yourself and and so like it's like one year in this past year his is like it's like I've let I lived a few lives just this past year because wow there's something happens out of bad things I promise and when I I had this attorney who was helping me out in New York I live in Israel but we were talking uh, via FaceTime and everything and, and mails and whatever. So I asked her, I gotta ask you, and she has this one of the biggest law firms ever in New York for helping out um, people. And um, like racism and sexual harassment and every any person who's been put down, basically. So I told her, um, I gotta ask you, why are you, like how did you get to this point where you help out people? And she tells me, when I was young, something bad happened to me, and since that day, anything I do good for someone, I actually do good for that little girl who got hurt, and today I want to help other people because I'm strong now, and I think that is amazing. So, there are three kinds of... Um, Three kinds of situations. So the first situation is where you do conscious work. When you do conscious work, is basically you're not thinking what's wrong, what's right. You know what's right, and in the rightness, you just do amazing work, like like being aware to what you eat, being aware, like just awareness, basically in this life. And it's it's so strong these days. Um, and you make it good. You make it even better. You use it for the good. Like for example, eating. So you want to have um, aware, aware eating. So before you eat, you actually bless it. 
you look at it, you think how it's going to taste even before it enters your mouth, you touch it, you do whatever, and you do awareness work and it really helps out with life. You know, that's like meditation, stuff like that. That's a, that's what we call in Hebrew, avodat mudaut. So that's awareness work. I'm sure there's a better word for that in English. So in this situation, you're in control, you're doing things, you're moving things around, you're, 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 you're on top of it in this life, okay? Second situation is when you're, you're in an unexpected situation. You don't, you might understand why it happened. You might not. Even like looking back, you might understand what happened. You might not. But you're in it anyways. It's like an anyways kind of <coughs> situation. I mean, I got to this point. Well, I might as well do my best, you know. And um, smart Jewish people say that you know the tzaddikim they say that it all happens because for some reason there's this something that happened to have that had to happen at this point of time in this place with that person like there's a reason for everything and we might not know it so i might as well just do my best because i know i'm a part of like this big plan that i didn't write the plan i'm a part of it so i'm just gonna do my job best as I can because I want to help out you know um and and what we're talking about is the third kind of situation which is a very negative reality you can it's it sounds like you may might understand might not understand this is like really messed up situation you understand it's messed up you understand like someone dies Someone gets raped in this parasha. Someone gets, like, his their feet are taken by this accident. You know, crazy stuff. And you understand it's bad. So the, the Lovavitch Rebbe says that, like, the two first, you know, the, the awareness work and the... Um, and the unexpected kind of situations, you know, it used to be that way. I mean, we used to do that job. We, we, but today, like in our days, we have to be in a state where we, um, the awareness today is a little different. And we have to, these days, like new age stuff and everything, that's nice. Okay, good. But in these days where we see that everything is so messed up, what we are expected to do and actually take these situations and try to work with them. It's not just a mistake that all the big people in the world are, like there's a lot of exposure now to people who have big, important people um, from every, like politicians, um, holy people, whatever, that are doing really bad stuff and are getting exposed or like, bad stuff that are being brought to the to the front and we don't understand why is everybody going that way I, I don't have a specific kind of example right now but what we're supposed to do is take these bad situations from our own life and anyways like from from a global kind of perspective too and try to understand why why is it happening and how do we make it godly how do we use it and put godliness into that situation and help out that's what we're supposed to do in these in this time in history basically okay so that's everything okay so so okay fine i get it but now what are we supposed to how do i help out how do i help out myself my friend my kids whatever anyone that is going through a bad situation so first of all first aid that's what we said. Like everything is for the best. Just to know that everything that happens, there's a reason. It does help out to understand that I'm just a part in a very big piece of this world and going through things that people have gone through and I'm going to go through now and people are going to go through. My kids are going to go through stuff and I have to know that I'm not in a sterile world. So... Um, but how do we do a more inner jog? So there's like word games here with the Jewish language. 
we can't bring it here but bottom line basically is that when someone goes into a very deep state of suffering I've been trying to remember the word suffering the whole time it just came out right now <sighs> you know what's funny is that my business is actually based on English and I do speak English but you know here and there sometimes I I lose my confidence because I can't remember words um, okay just yeah just whatever so um, <clears throat> Something that's very important to do is be a little cold for the, to the situation. I mean, not <clears throat> be a little far emotionally. Take yourself a little out of, out of the situation, out of the story. Don't get so involved. And, and I know it's stupid to say it. I mean, if you've been raped or if anyone died... How could you not be totally in? And I'm not saying you're not supposed to be. You are supposed to be. <clears throat> but in order to help out yourself, you're going to have to look at it from a little afar as much as you're going to need it. And it's not always possible, not for every person, not for every time, not for every situation. So that's why you're going to go to like a doctor or a therapist or a friend or anyone who's going to help you. And they are going to have to be very smart about it and not get involved emotionally. You know, like if this, imagine like you need help and you go to your husband and you're like, hubby, this happened to me. And he starts crying with you. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I need you to be strong. When we turn to someone, we need them not to get too involved. That's the best thing a person could do, right? Like if... <laughs> Jordan, Jordan Peterson, I love hearing him. And he was giving this example about, about like, if you're going to go save someone in the sea and you're trying to give him a hand and he's drowning, you're going to have to, you're going to have to make him not hold your hand. You're going to have to push him so he could understand that if he wants to get out of the water, he's going to have to let you be in your place and f far enough to help him get out of the water and pull him out. Okay, so to pull out someone, you have to be out of the situation. Yeah, so. Um, okay, so, so there are three steps that uh, Yaakov says about dealing. So first of all, you need the technical... Um, you're going to have to deal it on a technical way. You're going to have to go to the police or you're going to have to go, to, you're going to have to do some, the police I'm talking like rape situation because this is what it says here, but, but let's not get, go even there. Like if something bad happened, you, you're going to have to get up and do something about it. Um, what it means is not, I mean, even if someone dies, you're going to have to make a funeral, right? I'm going really extreme here. But even lesser stuff, like if your kid falls now, you're going to have to get him a band-aid. <laughs> like if that's like a mild. <laughs> um, you're not going to be all new age about it right now and say, hmm, I wonder why this happened. There's probably a very deep meaning for it. Let's breathe in and get it together and understand what is God trying to say. No, don't do that. Um... Don't do that. <laughs> Work, move, act. Um, and then you have to, get, he also says, you're going to have to be mad at God. Yeah, so it doesn't really like mean bad at God. He means just giving, being very authentic about being mad, about being um, emotional. Let yourself be emotional and and like just have all your feelings out not, not like no scream at the world, but if between you and yourself, you're going to have to give space for emotions and death of pain. You're going to have to do it. And then seeing the good. And seeing the good is a lot of times able if you move on. Like sometimes something bad happens. You can't right now. I'm not saying don't look back and 
and treat it but sometimes you're gonna have to right now something happened move okay if someone's shooting at you you don't understand you move and you're gonna have to move because you have to make yourself understand that this is not the main part in this world you have to move so you can look at it at whatever happened if you're in the spot you, you don't it's all you see because okay, so that's what i mean by moving um and also move i mean okay deal with it. i'm not saying don't of course deal with it but also get your life together really fast as you can so you don't think that this is the whole and this doesn't color your whole life and the sooner you, okay just for example i once i was i had a car for a week and a half i or it was like less than four years ago i'm i was already a mom of three i really wanted a car okay and i got and i just got my license and i stupid new driver i was looking at my phone doing little ways not thinking like you know i felt like the road is open for me but no it wasn't there was a car and i crashed into it nothing really bad happened you know but like my car just opened the wings out and funny and I got out. First of all, I got out. I went to the person in front of me. She was like shaking, like, are you okay? And I, I felt like, and I'm a new driver. And I came to her, are you okay? Is everything, are you Are you okay? Are you with me? And she was like, yeah. And she was shaking. I'm like, it's okay. Don't worry. We have insurance. We'll fix this. I like, I took action. Okay. Right away, I called this person to help me out. Whatever. I had, I did what I had to do, but I moved. I wasn't like standing there and panicking like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That's not good. That's not good. That makes trauma. Trauma happens when you just sit for too long. And some people never go back to the driving seat. I mean, I was only a week. I was only a week and a half driving by myself. I had no privilege to stop driving at that age, okay? Um, you know, I finally got a car. Like, I had this dream, finally. And I understood, like, very spontaneously in my mind, I can't... I can't get it. I, I no. I need to keep moving. So, so actually, my kids were waiting for me at the home because I was going to to Home Depot to get to get a tent because we we're gonna camp that night. So on my way to getting a tent, I crashed. So as I was like that, I drove to the uh, this place that fixed it. Like he taped my car together. And we fixed it as much as possible because I was thinking about my kids. I'm like, listen, it was holiday. Doesn't want it was holiday. It didn't want to work. Whatever. I'm like, you have to help me out because I can't let my kids understand that they can't trust their mom. I have to give them the, the full security. So he fixed my car. Whatever. And from there, I went to the place. I got the tents. I came back home. Put the kids in the car, and we went camping that same day. It's a crazy story, but I. But maybe not. But like, I know people who would never go back on the car at least that same day or even um, at all. So, so you have to move. You have to put yourself out of the situation and you have to have supportive people and as fast as possible, um, go back to your life with whatever happened because you guys, that those are like the secrets to, to be able to to process whatever happened i'm not saying not deal with it on a very personal way this is what you have to do by action but but next to that you go to therapy and you work it out and you and you and you take out your emotions and you and you mush it up okay because it's gonna help you understand on a deeper level why things happen or at least accept on a deeper level why these things happen um that's all I can say, and I hope you like this, and I hope this was helpful, and I hope that even if you know these things, so it like still was nice to hear. We're going to be here every week with practical spirituality. We learn from the Bible, the Jewish Bible, and we understand how could it be helpful for us out of that. Thank you. Bye.